trying to get this thing to come back to a stable bitrate. Okay. Hopefully the damn internet is going to stick through because this is the last Colossus. It's almost ironic that right before we start the fight for the final Colossus, my stream decides, oh, that's as far as I'm going to record on that one. But okay, so we're back. Uh, this is, I'm probably just going to make this a separate video on YouTube. So just for those of you who are tuning into this very, very short ending video, I'm Great Kiss Angel. Thanks for joining me. This is the final bit of uh, streaming Shadow of the Colossus. We're going to do the final Colossus and the end credits. Uh, thanks for watching, and let's get started. Now, uh, as I said in the earlier video before it decided to crap out on me, um, I'm going to try this. The Cloak of Deception. Now, that should allow us to hide. Uh, yeah, I did, uh, Leontin. I did read about the, the developer and the, the, the reason why it's named Malice. It's kind of cool, actually. Um, I believe we can bypass all of the obstacle courses we normally have to go through to get to the Colossus. Because he is not defenseless, I'll tell you that much right now. Um, there's a reason he's they saved the best for last. Now, we're either going to get blown completely out of the water. Or we're not. Now, there, there's things that you have to do. You have to, like, crisscross this, this minefield using the hidden catacombs and bunkers and stuff. To get close to him. But because we're using the cloak of, well, I guess it's deception, but it's invisibility more or less. He has no idea that we're right underneath him. It might be Malrus, uh, Elvis, Evis. I guess I can see that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, get where we have to go, kind of in between his his legs here. Normally you would come up here after navigating the you know the minefield and the attacks that he lobs at you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump back and give us our uh, Cloak of Force. Because he can't harm us from underneath his feet because he's kind of in one place. And now begins the long process of climbing up him uh, all along these sort of like armor plates that he's got. try and stay close to the sides and the back preferably because we're going to need to come up on his back anyways uh, this gives you plenty of time to prepare yourself mentally for the challenges that are bound to ensue You 
want to do is when you climb on his back, you want to stab this weak point so he'll reach around to try and get whatever's bothering him. We'll use that opportunity to jump back onto the back of his hand and we'll go from there. Now the idea is we want to climb to the top of his hand as best we can. We want to target the shoulder. Oh no, I'm sorry, I, I got it backwards. He wanted to lift his arm up. We want to uh, nail the other arm so that he, uh, he moves the other arm to grab it, and then we shift over to the other hand, and then we go with the uh, all that. Reaches the hand across. Now it's the same deal. We want to kind of same deal. Kind of he'll come over here to. our point to kind of now what we have to do is we have to there's a there's a point kind of like where I just was that if you're positioned just right his head movement will not jar you out of your strength uh, drawing back to do the final plunge. But for those of you who want to play this game by yourself for the first time and experience it, that's about as many tips as I'll give. Uh, you gotta have to figure out your own way to get around and underneath his feet. Because that's part of the fun, you know? That's part of the fun of playing a game is, is learning and, and, and figuring out what to do next. So I believe now there's going to be some scenes. Uh, I'm going to shut up just for a little while so that we can kind of let the scenes play out. And I'll pop back on when there's something to actually, you know, start describing and talking about. So enjoy this, you know, next bit of cutscenes.
Chance. Hey, Mom!
Okay, we're about to take control of Dorman here. Which is kind of cool. And if you've played uh, Eco, the Shadow Dorman might look familiar. Maybe there's a connection. I think there is, but I'll leave that to each player to come up to their own decisions and interpretations of it. Now, Square does a pounding attack. I think a breath attack is X. I don't think anything happens with Circle. Stomp with a uh, with a triangle. The controls are kind of iffy, as is most of the time in the game. For being such a powerful being, they're kind of slow. But uh, it's not really f it's not really a critique from a gameplay perspective because from the story perspective, it's actually there's a reason we can't you know do what we're doing. I guess it's kind of reminiscent of the Colossi, how slow moving they tend to be. Okay, now this is where certain trophies can come into play. You can actually uh, prevent yourself from being sucked in uh, so long as you have stamina in which to hold on to. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, they're kind of taking the dormant essence away. Hang off to one side here because we're going to utilize the doorway here to hold on. And we can hold on so long as we have stamina.
Now, if you hold off for, I think, a minute, you know, the game will give you a trophy. You know, you restore, you kind of stood against the power of the, the vortex for however long. But seeing as I already got the trophy, and there's really no point in delaying the inevitable. Because you cannot stop it. Your strength and your grip will eventually yield. And in you go. And I will leave the rest of the game to uh, go from there. Okay, we're back. We're coming up to the end credits. Um, there is a scene at the end of the credits, and once we save our game and we start uh, back up from the temple, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to climb it. I've done it before. Uh, I kind of 
vaguely remember the path we need to take, but we have more than enough stamina to do it, so we might take one or two tries to get it right. Uh, but something that uh, I, myself and a few of the others here in the chat on Twitch, uh, Leotin and uh, Miss, is it Miscrete? I'm assuming that that's the idea behind the, the two pairings of the words. We're kind of going over the sort of real interesting theory behind various things in Shadow of the Colossus, and I just want to share these with you who are watching this on YouTube who weren't part of the stream to see the chat. Um, Dorman, if you turn it around backwards and reverse the, the letters of their name, spell Nimrod, which the gist of the story is if you go into the, uh, the Bible, the Tower of Babel, which has some similarities to the giant tower in, in the Forbidden Land here in Shadow. Uh, apparently, something about he, he was being, you know, the different languages, the the dividing up of so that that kind of stuff can't be brought back ever again. The concept of evil. And, and what I like... Leo, okay. I, I just didn't know what you prefer. Uh, Pretty much everybody has their own username, so it's kind of hard to, like, I mean, uh, mine's Grey Chaos Angel, but, you know, Grey Chaos or Chaos Angel or just Grey works just as well. Um, everybody, you know, I don't want to offend anybody by saying their username wrong or, hey, you know, don't nickname it this way or that way. Um, but moving back to the, the central theory, and I guess my interpretation of it, um, it's interesting, and I was talking to, to Leo on it, on the chat, that is Dorman evil? Is it a, is it a situation where Dorman's powers are so beyond the realm of belief that these, I'm going to assume they're human, of course, these human tribesmen are so fearful of this thing they don't understand that they call it evil? That, the, that it's cursed, that it's it's dark, you have to avoid it at all costs. Is Dorman therefore technically good? I don't know. I mean, they did bring uh, the, the girl, her name's Mono, uh, back to life. Um, but, at the same token, it's kind of poetic that in order for Dorman to manifest, these humans who fear them so much had to destroy the vessel that they were being placed into once the Colossi were defeated. It's this big, you know, full circle, sort of Ouroboros type, you know, dragon or snake eating its own tail cycle that, that's really cool. And uh, the most prominent piece of evidence that is going to suggest that the Shadow of the Colossus and Eco are undeniably connected, one's the precursor, one's the one that comes after, is this scene right here. When you see what's at the bottom of this pool after what's happened. A boy born with horns. And if you want to draw even more similarities, Mono and Yorda both wear those long flowing white dresses. I guess hers is more of a pink brown color, almost a reddish tint to it.
And to close the whole thing and come uh, full circle, we have an eagle flying back towards our perspective as opposed to out into the world like the beginning of the game did. I really must say, and you get a good shot of how large the temple actually is. Uh, if it wasn't, you know, apparent from the, from the get-go. Yeah, this is pretty much the end of the stream. I am going to try to climb the tower. I've done it before in my, you know, on my own. I'm going to try to show a video of it climbing. I'll probably fall once or twice. But, uh... That's, that's, that's about it. That, this is Shadow of the Colossus. In a nutshell, it's, it's a very fun game to play. Uh, there are some frustrating bits. Obviously, I kind of lost my cool on the... Um, 13th Colossus a little bit. Just a tiny bit. And, uh... Yeah, it's... In my opinion, if... if you're a gamer out there and you haven't played Eco or Shadow of the Colossus, you owe it to yourself to go out and try to play them. Um, and get hyped for The Last Guardian, because if, if it's anything close to what these two games were, it's going to be amazing. Okay, so now that we've, uh, we'll get to a safe point, I believe... It'll ask us to save our game, and we'll go from there. Alright, so that that just completed my fourth time through the game on one particular New Game Plus save file. So now we're starting the fifth game. Uh, not going to play through it again, no, no. Uh, but we are going to try to climb the tower. Um, which is going to be... If it's going to be difficult, it's going to be more due to my own stupid mistakes as opposed to any actual difficulty with the amount of stamina we have uh, built up. Because, uh, as Leo points out, you can pretty much climb the, the shrine uh, after the 14th uh, Colossus your first time through the game. So, the fact that we've got four entire playthroughs beyond that shouldn't be any difficult. Any difficulty whatsoever shouldn't be there. Go ahead and skip all this. Now the thing is, when you when you get to the top of the tower, there's a bunch of forbidden fruit, and you have to consume them in order to uh, fulfill, I believe, the trophy to have eaten all the fruits in the land. But what this fruit does is it decreases your stamina and health. So all that you've worked to build up to get to the top of the tower, you have to eat it all back down to as if you had just started a brand new game. Now I, I don't know if they've taken this out for the PlayStation 3 version, but in the PS2 version, I know that you can pretty much use aggro as sort of a springboard to jump a little bit further up on the wall where the moss is so you don't have to do that extra bit of, you know, climbing. Now you want to stay to the right here because if you go off to the left you're not going to be able to make your... Uh, connection to the I think it's a ledge I tried this before I did my stream and I made a few mistakes and I was just like ah, I'll do it for real when I actually do the stream
Yeah, I, I, it's kind of, that's why you always want to keep different saves. You never want to just rely on one save. It's the one thing I've kind of learned throughout my years as game, uh, by gaming. is just, you just want to ensure that. I didn't climb high enough. Come on. Oh god, come on. I know that that's the point where I have to... <sighs> Prime example of honest, stupid mistakes. Come on. Come on. Nope, 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 damn it. <sighs> I knew that was going to happen. Unavoidable. Anytime I'm going to do something that I can do off camera, I'm going to completely mess it up on camera. There's the, I know there's a ledge that we have to swing, kind of like shimmy our way across, but maybe I'm thinking two steps ahead and I'm not quite there yet. I think I have to go higher up. I think that's my mistake. I tried climbing on something that I thought was supposed to be higher up. This is the one we want to grab onto. This ledge, see, I got confused. It's an honest mistake. Maybe. Come on, move over. There we go. Now with this one, you gotta make sure that you're far enough over so that when you lean back you can actually grab hold of the moss I made a mistake I was supposed to go down I think I made too many mistakes on this particular run. We'll probably run out of strength just as we don't want to lose it, but. think I'm supposed to be able to grab onto that. Yep. 
Yeah, but I missed my my path. It's gonna hurt. There's a cool thing. Uh, one of the items you can get in time attack on hard mode is you can get a cloak or something that actually allows you to glide downward. Uh, if you make it, if you fall from a high distance, and you don't want to take damage. You can actually glide down to the to the ground. Yeah, I figured I made the wrong, the wrong grab. But now that I, you know, it's a learning experience. Now I know I have to go all the way up and not to get stuck in the crevices and the weird kind of grabbing points. Cloak of desperation. Yeah, I think that's what it's. I think that's what it's called too. I do not yet have it, but uh, one of these days. stuck there again so I want to kind of go up and above there we go That's, that's kind of nerve-wracking that you have to kind of let go of the ledge to drop down just a fraction of a distance to be able to jump onto that ledge. I always get the sensation like, oh, nope, made a mistake, I'm going to fall. Okay, I believe... Yep, got to make a... I went down too far. Come on. There we go. Pretty much have to... supposed to kind of get higher up and do that but you know what yeah anyways you can get to the top I don't really feel like trying to do it over and over and over again but uh, I've done it before you can do it too if you just do a little bit of practice uh, check out some videos online of them doing it or just try your hand try to figure out your own path but uh Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'm Craig Chaos Angel. I'm gonna call it quits for this stream. I want to thank to uh, give a thank, big shout out to Leo Ten One Twenty Three, uh, Miss Crete, uh, uh, Num, uh, it's Numa Fourteen or something like that, or Nimwa 
15, 14, something like that, who also chimed in. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, commentating and uh, kind of uh, doing all that good stuff with the stream and the chat. Kept me busy, kept me thinking. A lot of interesting things I did not previously know about Shadow of the Colossus, so thank you, Leo, in particular. Uh, a lot of theories I did not know about. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, thank you for sticking through it. I hope you guys enjoy Shadow of the Colossus. I will see you on the next stream slash Let's Play whatever game it's going to be. So until then, I'm Great Case Angel. I will see you guys next time. Later.